بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكل إنسان ألزمناه طائره في عنقه ونخرج له يوم القيامة كتابا يلقاه منشورا اقرأ كتابك كفى بنفسك اليوم عليك حسيبا صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله brothers and sisters we are continuing with these Quranic principles for life and every ayah of the Quran is a manual and a guide for us in any, in any given aspect of our lives. And in this Mubarak and blessed ayah, in the 15th juz, Surah Al-Isra, ayat number 13 and 14, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَكُلَّ إِنسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ That every single person, his fate is attached to his own neck. Yani he is responsible for his own, basically his own doings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given every human being free will. And you are responsible of your actions in the life of this world. As if it is attached, you know, around your own neck. What is going to happen to you, right? This is the result of your own choices that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you free will in the life of this world. وَنُخْرِجُ لَهُ and based on this, we will bring out for him, we will give him kitaban yalqahu manshura, a book and a record of deeds which will be open for his review. It will be open for his own reading on that day. And Allah will say to him, Iqra kitabak. Now read your own book. Kafa bi nafsika liyawma alayka hasiba. You yourself are sufficient as a reckoner for your own self. You be your own reckoner. You be your own judge now on this day. This is the book that you have written. You read your own book. Are you the villain of this book or are you the hero of this book? Your own choices that you made is what now, this is the book, your own book that has been given to you. With that being said, what is the, what is the Quranic principle in this? The Quranic principle is that beware that you are writing your own book and you are writing your own story. Right now, you made this decision to come to the masjid, pray Salatul Taraweeh, and sit here and listen. Nobody put a gun to your head. Nobody forced you. You, by your own choice, now the angels, the scribes, kiram and katibin, ya'lamuna ma taf'alun. The noble scribes, they're actually called katibin. These are, these, these are things just like the weighing of the deeds on the day of judgment is true. The book of deeds that will be given to you in your right hand or on your left hand, this is true. This is part of our creed. This is part of our aqidah as Muslims. Just like there will be a mizan and our deeds will be weighed on the day of judgment, similarly our book of deeds will be given to us either in our right hand if we are fortunate and if our book of deeds is filled with good, or it will be given to our left hand if that book of deeds is filled with evil. And this is a, this is a, a common theme throughout the Qur'an, and it is part of our iman as Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ And as for the one that will be given his book in his right, فَيَقُولُ هَا أُمُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَ he will say, come everyone, read my book. Inni dhanantu anni mulaqin hisabiyya. I thought that I was really going to be taken into task and reckoning. In other words, I did not imagine that, you know, all of my good deeds and all the work that I did is going to be in a clear book. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ And as for the one that will be given his book of deeds on his left, فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوتَ كِتَابِيَ وَلَمْ أَدْرِ مَا حِسَابِيَ Oh, if only I would not have been given this book. What book is this? If only I have not been given this book. وَلَمْ أَدْرِ مَا حِسَابِيَ And if only I didn't know what is this reckoning. If only there was no reckoning. 
اني يعني ما ادري ما حسابي يا ليتني hmm? يا ليتها كانت القاضيه oh if only this would have been the end of me right oh if only this would have been the end of me so these records and these book of deeds that our angels the angels of the right who are writing all of our good deeds and they come into a record and every as is mentioned in the hadith of bukhari these kiram and katibin that are with us these kiram and katibin that are with us every morning and every evening at salatul fajr and at salatul asr they change shifts yata'aqabuna malaikatun bil layl wa malaikatun bin nahar you have angels that change shifts angels of the day that they come at salatul fajr and the angels of the night go back up and they take the deeds of the night up to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these records and they're added to the book they're added to our record and at asr salat the angels of the day they go up and the angels of the evening they come down that is why the ulama mentioned that after salatul fajr till the rising of the sun is a time of dhikr and the remembrance of allah and at salatul asr all the way to maghrib to sunset is a time of dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should try if we can to occupy that time with the remembrance of allah because that is the time that the angels are changing shifts allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks oh my angels what was my slave doing and allah ta'ala knows best and allah knows better he th this is a this is as witnesses otherwise allah doesn't need uh, any information allah is alimul ghaib wa ya'lamu ma fi sudur Allah is the knower of the unseen and he knows what the hearts conceal. He doesn't need even the angels. But this is for testimony. These are witnesses. These angels are witnesses. And the, uh, somebody might ask, why, have the, why this book? Why the weighing of deeds? Why the angels? What's the purpose of this? All of it is to establish the justice on that day. And we will, Allah Ta'ala says, we will place the scale of reckoning on that day. And no soul shall be wronged. And not only that, the angels will be brought as witnesses. Your book of deeds that recorded every single action of yours will be brought as a case against you or for you. And even the earth will bear witness. Even the earth will bear witness. It will be brought forth, right? يَوْمَ إِذِنْ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَالَهَا يَوْمَ إِذِنْ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا The earth will bear witness because Allah had commanded it. Allah had inspired it. O earth, speak. What are the sins that took place on you? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make our hands and our feet to bear witness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that al yawma tukallimu afwahihim al yawma nakhtimu ala afwahihim wa tukallimuna aydihim wa tashhadu arjuluhum bima kanu yaksibun This day Allah says we will seal their mouths. This day we will seal their mouths. And we will make their hands speak. And even their feet will bear witness of what that, that which they earned. So now we have how many witnesses? We have our book of deeds. We have our angels. We have the earth. And we have our own bodies. These are the four witnesses. There's no way that you'll be able to lie. There's no way that you'll be able to cheat. There will be no way that there will be any injustice. Right? Like imagine you go in front of the judge, you ran the red light. Here is the surveillance video, here is the picture, here is your license, here is your photo. Right? All of these, these will be, will be, will be witnesses. There's nothing that you will be able to say. So uh, this is something, my dear brothers and sisters, this is our iman. And this is our faith. Therefore, it is a principle to live by that before we are taken into reckoning and before our own book is presented to us you take hisab and you take reckoning of yourself take a reckoning of yourself before the reckoning is taken of you 
That person which will have the most easiest reckoning on the Day of Judgment is who? The one who took his own reckoning. Just recently, a great scholar in England passed away at a very ripe age, uh, Maulana, Maulana Muhammad Adam, the father of Mufti Muhammad bin Adam Kawthari. Maulana Muhammad Adam was his name. His son showed a, a, a book, a register. This register had years and years of literally mamulat, and he had a schedule and a uh, good deeds chart. And it was a list of 15 to 20 things. Salat with Jamaat, daily Quran, daily dhikr, muraqaba and pondering over my sins and my life, and you know, doing my morning and evening duas, and reading my munajat. And he had a complete like 15 to 20 things that he had on this register, and you could see years and years of registers that he had made and he had checks that you would not find. They said that maybe in 40 to 50 years, he had not missed a single salat with jamaat. He took a reckoning of his own self. Now when you are looking at that register, somebody had sent a clip of that. So I was looking at that. I said, subhanAllah, this is the person that inshaAllah, who knows, the ultimate knowledge is with Allah. We can never say absolutely for a fact you know this person is subhanallah he's you know past we don't know but the way that he had taken reckoning of himself this is the way if a person takes reckoning of himself he doesn't have to worry about the reckoning of the hereafter just like a person that knows he's going to be audited by the irs you know when the irs is going to come after you if you check yourself and correct your aud you audit yourself before you get audited you won't get in trouble. If you have all your taxes and all your paperwork and all everything, all your you know, documents and everything that is set, you've paid your taxes, you've paid your dues, and everything is in order, you're not going to get in trouble by the IRS. right? And if you don't have that in order, then what's going to happen? If it's not in order, then you're going to be in trouble and the reckoning is going to be hard. The one who doesn't have his papers ready, then when the IRS comes to audit him, he's going to be in trouble. He's going to be in, in, in a state of, of, of worry and anxiety. What's going to happen? What they're going to pull out from here? But if you took reckoning of your own self, you don't have to worry about reckoning. Like a person, right, he packs his own bags. He's careful that he doesn't put anything. Then when they open his bags at the customs, well, you go ahead, check. I don't have anything. Check my bags, right? But if you are not careful, and you're not concerned and you stuff everything in there without, you don't know. This is where then they're going to question you. What is this and what is that? So, my dear brothers and sisters, when we know that our book of deeds is going to be presented to us, let us be ready for that. To count our words. To count our deeds. To count our actions. To count our ma'amulat, just as that sheikh, he was, right, he had a register of all of the actions that he did that day. If we make this a practice, for example, of all the things that I say in a single day, I take a rec record of that. What are the good words that I said? What are the bad things that I said? What are the inappropriate things? What are the bad things that I looked at? And what are the bad things that I seen? The inappropriate things that I should not be looking at. Okay, I take, I take a check. I have to make tawbah for that. I made, I made ghibat and ba I, I backbited. Okay, that one. Astaghfirullah for that action that I did, Ya Allah. Astaghfirullah for that statement that I made, Ya Allah. Astaghfirullah for that glance that I looked at, which was not appropriate. Astagh so you now know what to make tawbah for and what to make istighfar for. Now when you've, you, you, you've done, you've, you've taken account of yourself, that will not be taken account of you in the hereafter. It's done. You already took account of yourself. Now you don't have to worry about the account. So this is, subhanAllah, the way that we should approach this, right? That if we count our own words and we count our own deeds and we take our own selves into uh, uh, reckoning and we have that book and we know exactly, okay, what are the deeds that I did? Then we will not be mentioning like, those who will have a rude awakening when their book is presented to them. Oh my God, what is this book? Wa wudi al-kitabu 
Allah Ta'ala says, and when the books will be placed. فَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ you will see the wrongdoers. They will be in fright. They will be terrified of the predicament that they will be in. They will say, what is with this book? Ya oh Allah, oh, woe upon me. What is this book? It does not leave any minute or large thing. It does not leave anything except that it is mentioned here. لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها. It has encompassed everything. It has taken into account everything, every word, every deed. ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرة. They will find everything they did present before them. ولا يظلم ربك أحدا. And your Lord does not do injustice to anyone. So, my dear brothers and sisters, in this Mubarak month of Ramadan, we have okay. You know, I wake up for suhoor and I have my du'as and I pray my fajr and then, it, you know, it gives us a regimen. Okay, Salatul Taraweeh starts at this time, Isha starts at this time. We have, keep a record, keep a regimen of your daily actions, of your daily spiritual practices. Okay, today I did all my five daily prayers. Some people in the month of Ramadan, wasting entire nights watching YouTube. Imagine, entire night is passing watching YouTube videos. This one month that Allah Ta'ala given you, you don't reckon, what do you do from morning to evening? Take a record. You'll see that you do nothing. Sitting, just waiting around. Okay, that's fine. You want to spend your entire Ramadan just sitting around? I sleep half the day, and then the rest of it, okay, you know, two hours fast, right? The rest is sleep, and then two hours fast from, you know, five to seven o'clock. Okay, now it's iftari time, and then get a little bit angry, and get a little bit, you know, uh, annoyed, and then, uh, subhanallah, then, you know, this is like, subhanallah, what, how did you pass this month of Ramadan? Hazrat Shah Wasiullah and our Kabir and our elders, they said, Ramadan ke mehna gaya, mehroom nahi rehna chahiye. The month of Ramadan has come. Don't allow this month to pass. Ayyama ma'adudat. Allah said that it's a, few, it's a few days. Every action is multiplied beyond imagination. In one hadith it says that one, one nafil is equal to a fard act in the month of Ramadan. And one fard act is multiplied by 70. Imagine, they say 70, this is how some of the ulama have explained this. 70 nafils, 70 optional prayers, equal one fard act. Seventy. Seventy optional prayers or seventy optional acts is equal to one fard. And one fard in the month of Ramadan is multiplied by seventy. This is what some of the ahadith have mentioned. So you can imagine, how can we waste this month? How can we not, from the start of the day till the end of the day, have a mamulat for yourself? Still you have, subhanAllah, half the month left. Still we have the cream of this Mubarak month that's left. Don't waste your time. Don't waste these days and nights passing it in just like, okay, let me just sit around. It's Ramadan. Sit around, subhanAllah. People we used to make like one khatam a day in the month of Ramadan. And I can understand for people who work. I can understand for people who have jobs. I can understand for people who are going to school. Some people, they just completely, they do nothing. And they sit all day. Waiting for that. This is this is the this is the, the, the literally this is the, the 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 duty of Ramadan. Waiting for iftar. This is my my whole fasting is passing with waiting for iftar. Everybody's waiting for iftar. But while you wait, make some duas. While you wait, read some Quran. While you wait, do some amal. Do dhikr. Have ma'amulat. Have a schedule of righteous deeds that you do. One, two, three, okay, my daily du'as. I'm going to read these special du'as. Okay, my daily dhikr, my daily Qur'an. Okay, you know, have a schedule to keep yourself occupied and busy so you can maximize your rewards in the month of Ramadan. So that when you're given your book of deeds, you'll be like, Allahu Akbar. Pages and pages of hasanat that then what's going to happen? You're going to be banking on them in your account of the hereafter. That's going to be your 401k. Everybody's thinking about the retirement plan of the hereafter. Nobody's thinking, everybody's thinking about the retirement plan here, your 401k in dunya. But what about the retirement plan of the akhirah? How many khatams will you take with you? 
How many hasanat and dhikrs and duas will you take with you? How many charities will you take with you? So these are things, my dear brothers and sisters, that book, make the book the way you want it. You are the, you are the, you are the writer of the story, how you want your story to be. You're writing this book. How do you want this book to be? You have been given complete authority. How do you want to write this? Do you want to write this as somebody just sitting around all day? Or somebody who did something? That the opportunities, the azkar that you could do, the zikrs that you could do, the recitations that you could do, the amal that you could do, the duas that you can make, keeping yourself busy in the most righteous things, have a register and keep a record of all of those because just as you keep that record, that is the record that will be given back to you. How do you want it? That same record that you're doing, that is how it's going to be handed to you. But with more mercy, Allah will multiply each of the deeds that you did, 10 up to 700. Allah multiplies. He's not going to give you for one that you did, one. For one that you did, the minimum is 10 up to 700. And with your sincerity, Allah can multiply it even more than that. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is a Quranic principle to know that our deeds are going to be presented to Allah and they are going to be presented to us. We are writing our books. Every day is a page from the book of life. And every year of your life is a chapter in the book of your life. And when you pass away, that book will be closed and it will, there will be no more writing in that kitab. It will be handed to you. Your own book that you wrote by your own deeds, by your own actions. You're the judge. And then Allah will say, Kafa bi nafsika al-yawm. Kafa bi nafsika al-yawm alayka hasiba. You are a sufficient judge for your own self. What, what, how would you judge yourself? Do you fail yourself or do you pass? You be your own judge. You wrote your own book. You tell me. Subhanallah. Look at the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La dhulma al-yawm. May Allah give us tawfiq that we make the most out of these few nights and days that we don't waste it that we don't spend it in useless pursuits. We are all waiting for iftari, but let us wait while we do something that is good and something that is righteous.